so hello everyone so today we are going to discuss a very important topic often asked by surveyor in MEO exams uh, that is cargo pump room regulations so we are going to discuss all the regulations actually I have here summarized all the regulation from different uh, like the information is scattered somebody was not covering couple of information somebody was not coupling, uh, covering some of the other informations so I've summarized all the information here all together in a nutshell so it becomes clear crisp for you so we'll go uh, you can see the layout of the pump room that the cargo pump room arrangement we have cargo tanks and the cargo pump room so this is also a, a ship uh, 3d figure you can analyze the cargo pump room so whosoever have sailed they must be aware of about the cargo pump room so we have cargo pump room regulations will go one by one so we have bilge level monitoring with alarm so see wherever this alarm picture uh, alarm thing comes in picture so you need to know that alarm will sound in uh, engine control room the cargo co cargo control room bridge as well as in the pump room uh, so uh, we have will have bilges so we'll have for the bilges we'll have bilge level alarm monitoring system and this audio and visual alarm will sound at all those places ECR, CCR, navigational bridge and pump room itself. Now, the second one is very important and technical. Lighting shall be interlocked with ventilation fan except emergency lighting. Iska matlab kya hua? What does it mean? It means that ventilation should be on as soon as the light is switched on. So, uh, so as soon as you switch on the light, light, uh, light, the ventilation should be on. But that doesn't mean if your ventilation, uh, if, uh, if your ventilation goes out, then it should not be that your lighting should also go out. Okay, so there is an interlock provided between them. Next one is a system for continuous monitoring of hydro hydrocarbon gases because you know why this regulation has come in picture because there were many accidents, pump room accidents. So this comes in picture we have hydrocarbon which is very toxic and hazardous and fatal to the human health so we have hydrocarbon monitoring equipment fitted and the sampling point or detector head shall be located in suitable positions such that potentially dangerous leakages are readily detected now this suitable position doesn't mean that it should only be only be at the top or only at the bottom so it should be located all the other points so that it can detect it properly and can warn you now when hydrocarbon level reaches a preset value okay but not more than 10 percent so it will depend on the pump uh, uh, so that will depend on the manufacturer so it should not go beyond 10 percent but it uh, when it reaches a preset value whatever is the value is there of lower flammable limit that audio visual alarm should sound in all those places ecr ccr bridge and pump room okay so this you can see the uh, um, this equipment where we are sounding this is bottom we have pump room so all these things uh, you can see here now cargo pumps ballast pumps stripping pumps installed in cargo pump room and driven by shaft so we have some time we have cargo pumps that is there we also have ballast pump stripping pump installed in cargo pump room now these pumps will be driven by an alternate um, uh, medium so the, for uh, the alternate medium cannot be in the pump room so it has to be outside the pump room so the shaft will pass through the bulkhead so in such a case we need to have temperature sensing device for bulkhead shaft gland bearings and pump casing uh, now all these temperature sensing devices alarm should be continuous okay now wherever this comes in picture so you need to have the procedure pasted over there ki in such a case of high temperature or in such a case of an emergency what has to be done for the common benefit of all so now next one is cargo pump room should be mechanically ventilated and capacity should be 20 air chains per hour so now you must be have, having a question that what type of ventilation fan so ventilation fan should be such that it should be able to do 20 air changes per hour of the total volume volume of the pump room so whatever is the total volume of the pump room for that we, we the pump should be able to the ventilation fan should be able to ventilate 20 air changes 
position of vent outlet must be 3 meter away from the near now see wherever this ventilation why this pump room uh, coming in picture uh, this these regulations are important because of the flammable and the toxic and the fatal gases that that may come out so with this reason so the outlet if it goes into the accommodation that will also be fatal then that will also be toxic so the regulation is that the ventilation outlet which will be on the open deck so it should not be uh, it should must be three meter away from the nearest ventilation source or opening of the accommodation okay so this is the ventilation fan that we were discussing about okay now you can see here so we also have a damper over here which we will be discussing subsequently now an emergency intake two meter away uh, above the pump room lower grating is to be provided now the M and in, now we have a normal suction normal suction we also have an emergency suction which is of two meter away the pump room it is used when lower intake is sealed off because of flooding of bilges so if in case there is a flooding if in case there is a flooding so what we do we what we do we have that ventilation success from emergency bilges it should have damper now this emergency bill suction should have damper which is capable of being closed from exposed main deck and lower grating level lower grating level floor grating should be should not disturb the free flow of the air now that these grating should be such that it should not be able to disturb the free flow of the air now uh, the ventilation fan that we have ventilation fan blade should not be non sparking type it should not be sparking type because the fans blaze when it moving because we have toxic and flammable gas it should not be able to uh, generate spark because that will have a fire hazard so foam type extinguisher with a secondary means of extinguisher and dead man's alarm must be present now this we have a foam type extinguisher now whenever we are extinguishing a fire there is a chances of reignition for double safety we should also have a secondary means of extinguishing okay that can be a, a hyper mist system as well and that may be a fixed firefighting system and as well as dead man's alarm must be present now we have a stretcher in case of an emergency uh, like some there is a casualty so we need to have neil robertson stretcher must be present now all those fire detectors that we are using inside the pump room it should be intrinsically safe fire detectors okay so that there is no chances of fire now manually activated uh, activated trips for the main cargo pump provided at the lower pump room level and at the top main deck so uh, we can say it's an emergency stop as well or the uh, manually activated trip so in case of an emergency we have what we can do is that we can get it done uh, we can stop the pump from the main deck itself or in from the cargo pump room as well spray arrester should uh, around the glands of all rotary cargo pumps in order to reduce the formation of mist even in the event of minor leakages from the gland we also need to have the provision of emergency scrape uh, scape breathing devices that is eebds located within the pump room and cited to be readily accessible so this has to be readily accessible because in case of an emergency as you know eebd that is used to escape from a compartment which is filled with toxic gases fitting a double seal arrangement to contain any leakage from the primary seal and to activate a remote alarm to indicate that leakage has occurred so we have a double seal arrangement so in case if the first seal leaks then we have the second seal which can uh, contain the leakages Thank you so much.